Um, let's look at the two really big things here. The earth balls. Now earth balls are rather different from puff balls. They've got a much thicker skin, leathery skin almost, about two to three millimeters thick. And it's really not fit for any kind of consumption. It's very, very tough. Uh, and the inside is very granular and it's definitely not worthwhile. So these two we put aside. We then have uh, this really tall thing with a cap that's very grooved or striated all along the margin of the cap. And it's a tawny grisette, so that's pretty good. I would say something like about getting on for nearly four stars. Uh, this is another Amanita, and this is the very common uh, false death cap Amanita citrina. It is not worthwhile, it smells of raw potatoes, and it's definitely not uh, something to take home. It's not poisonous, but uh, not worthwhile. These, interestingly, grow in areas with conifers, and you can see there's a cone pine there. How good is that? It actually demonstrates the kind of habitat you'll find it. These are the false chanterelles. Fall chanterelles do not smell of apricots. They are also ones with real gills as opposed to false gills, and they're really not worthwhile. So we leave that to one side. The same again with these few small ones. We have also a really nice collection. Uh, pretty much most people have got them, which are winter chanterelles or yellow leg, uh, and much more nice and big specimens here. They're called uh, Cantorellus tubeformis or infundibuliformis, the yellow legs or winter chanterelles. These are fantastic, they're the same family of chanterelles, very, very good indeed. Uh, so, all of that can go in there. These are more of the fall chanterelles. Put that to one side. Very, very common butter cap, Calibia butyracea. Feels like butter to the touch, hence the name. Uh, not worthwhile. Very, very poor quality. Not poisonous, but not worthwhile. Uh, some more of the yellow legs. So that's great. Very, very nice mushroom. And again, here we have the wood woolly foot. Nicely demonstrated by the base of the stem being really woolly um, and often attached to bits of twig and leaves. They are very much an active leaf litter decomposer um, and it's not worthwhile. Calibia perinata. Uh, amethyst deceivers, they can be very variable in color, hence the name deceiver. Anything from that to a saturated form over there, but in fact if you look at the gills, always lilac and dropping lilac spores, which is Lecaria amethystia, amethyst deceiver. Uh, very nice, nice fungus to find. You can have it with a good vinaigrette mixed in a green salad uh, that will surprise your friends and neighbors and family. Um, okay, we've got some more examples of the false death cap here. You can see, sorry, not that one, but this one. You can see the warts over there. Uh, really not something to be consumed. Uh, smelling of potatoes. Same again there, false chanterelle. This is another of that. You can see the vulva being taken on a cap of a young specimen. Already you can see the striations of grooves along the edge of the margin there, the tawny grisette, so that's fine. You might remember there are quite a lot of beach in the forest we went to today, and when you go through an area with a lot of beach, you will find these red rustulas with granular stems like chalk, equidistant, clean, very crowded white gills. The red Russulas in beech forests are called the beech wood sicana, which is Russula emetica. Uh, not deadly poisonous, but a pretty poisonous fungus and uh, one definitely to be avoided. Uh, unlike these, which are perfectly harmless, common yellow Russula, Russula ochreleuca, but they're really not worthwhile. More of the really nice winter chanterelles here. And then we have a bolete. Always nice to see a bolete, very much different to your gill mushrooms, spongy layer of tubes. These are actually very compact still, so you can't separate the tubes from the flesh because they're very, very tight. So it's very nice. Bay bolatus, bolatus pardius, excellent edible mushroom. Two more of the winter chanterelles there. We have these quite tough stem russulas, russula nigricans. Unlike other russulas, which are much more fragile, this is much more robust, and see how distant the gills are, but also look at how thick each individual gill is. Very, very firm. They are not worthwhile. The spotted tough shank, Calibia maculata, shank or stem, is spotted, and they are like rust spots all along. 
Uh, they really are not worthwhile. The stems of Calibias are very, very uh, fibrous, so not fit for consumption. Here we have, in fact, uh, yet another wood woolly foot, Calibia perinata. Uh, very faded form of the Paul Chanterelle wood woolly foot. Of all the fungi in the collection, these are the most dangerous because this is a web cap, a quaternarius. Um, and you can see fine fibers of cobwebs there trapping the tobacco brown spores. Very, very dangerous indeed. Uh, Butter cap, Libya, Euteraceae, not worthwhile. Another one of these web caps. Um, almost a hint of lilac in the base there. Be very careful when you find wood bluids, not to confuse wood bluids with the violet form of a web cap. Butter cap. Uh, this is interesting. We profile this in the course. The brown roll rim, the rim of the fungus on the underneath is rolled in, but this will soon fade in its distinctiveness of being rolled in as a cap stretch uh, this become lost um, so try and find young specimens but they're always brown they tend to be tapered and the gills will get increasingly much more brown with aging because they drop brown spores two more magnificent specimens of bay belatus belatus body is very good to eat now this superficially looks like a bay belatus because it has a deep colored cap but look how different the stem is to a bay belatus. so interestingly this is not a bay belatus, but it's just as good a mushroom it is belatus aureus and it grows in association with oak trees and they're very good to eat as well the tubes are already starting to open there so you'll have to discard the tubes with this chewed up section you can see the cross section of flesh and tubes uh, and Peter will demonstrate how to best remove those tubes. So all of that is good so far. Perhaps you need a container is just about right. <laughs> um, very large oversize uh, of the false uh, chanterelle. Uh, you can see in younger specimens, very orange. Some big uh, rustula here, an oversized rustula ocreluca, uh, not worthwhile. And this is plums and custards, Trichulomopsis rutulans, very sticky caps, um, it's not worthwhile. And the same again. And here we have a milk cap. Um, I'll just scratch the gills so you find a fungus with sort of concentric margin, sometimes less obvious with like this one. In doubt, just scratch the gills with your fingernail like that. And that, that line you've created there, you'll see droplets of different colors, mostly white oozing out from that so there will be a lactarius, a milk cap. Uh, some of the lactarius can be poisonous if they're very woolly in the cap. The woolly milk cap um, is very dangerous but the saffron milk cap is very nice, highly prized in Spain that has orange milk that goes green, green blotches uh, in a few minutes and that's oxidation. Um, and then that's a very small specimen of a spotted tough shank, not worthwhile. So, uh, all of these, while it's quite interesting to look at, are harmless with the exception of the web caps. And that can be consumed in the kitchen. <laughs> Is that